Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, to Oxford on this Monday afternoon. Uh, good morning to those people who are in the US. Uh, I know we have people from several countries uh, registered here today, so thank you for, for joining us for the next 40, 45 minutes or so. So today we have a webinar with Andreas Angelopoulos. Andreas is the Program Director for the Oxford Chicago Valuation Program and an Executive Director at the Private Equity Institute at the Sai Business School, University of Oxford. So the uh, Oxford Chicago Valuation Program is an executive program which uh, Sai Business School runs in partnership with Chicago Booth. We've been running this program for four years in May. Uh, it's become one of our uh, popular programs. The differentiating features of this is really the level of detail which we go into across a wide range of uh, corporate and private equity cases and transactions. Andreas today will give us uh, an insight of that. He will talk about the, uh, the problem of when to uh, apply valuation. Uh, he will talk a little bit about how our program helps to answer that, that, that program and then give a brief overview of one of the, one of the, the cases so you can see that uh, from the inside as well and, and see some content. So at this point I'll hand over to Andreas uh, who will take us through for the next 35-40 minutes. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, good afternoon from Oxford. Um, this is Andreas Angelopoulos. Um, uh, I'm um, uh, running uh, this program, uh, Oxford Chicago Valuation uh, Program, um, in more than four years and I joined Oxford 2011 um, uh, running the Private Equity Institute um, and founding the Oxford State Finance Lab uh, too. Um, uh, today we will have three sessions. The first session we will discuss how valuation is applying to corporate and private equity investments, uh, uh, which are the main questions and which is the knowledge that you need to have uh, uh, to answer um, these questions. Um, then the second session will be um, what do we suggest as an answer? Um, we will present um, our program uh, that has a unique feature um, of the three layers. The first layer is theory by the leading faculty uh, from Chicago and Oxford. Uh, the second is cases by um, uh, senior practitioners from various banks and funds. And the third is network and interaction during uh, the Oxford Chicago discussions with um, our um, senior alumni. Um, the other thing that I would like to mention before we will start uh, um, is uh, March 14. Uh, we will have um, an, an event in London. Um, uh, uh, Steve and the team, uh, they will post um, uh, next Monday on uh, LinkedIn uh, or you can ask uh, Steve, you can email to Steve for any questions. Uh, it will be around private equity and co-investments uh, with Sterling Square, with GIC and with Hermes, me and Tim Jenkinson. Um, we will um, have presentations and Q&A in the Chicago Booth Campus March 14 at 6 o'clock and you are welcome to join us, uh, the people that they register in this uh, um, webinar uh, today. Now, how valuation is uh, um, applying to corporate and private equity investments? Um, are you preparing a company for an IPO? You need to value this company. Are you analyzing the performance of a public listed company as an equity research analyst? Are you merging two companies as an M&A uh, house or as a CFO of a business? Are you working for uh, um, a public authority or, and you're working around privatizations or public asset disposal programs or you try to acquire an asset as a sovereign fund or as a pension fund? Are you selling part of your business as an entrepreneur? Are you a corporate m and and you try to acquire another business or to do a consolidation or a build-up? Are you raising financing for leverage or project or infrastructure investments? Do you want to restructure an asset that is in a distress situation and you need to value it? What is important to know valuing a company or an investment? You need to understand the company's financial statements and position. You need to analyze the business plan, the three years historically and the projections um, the next uh, 10 years. You need to analyze and forecast working capital, CapEx and how it's treated R&D, if it's a healthcare or a pharma company. 
you need to understand how I calculate the free cash flow starting from EBITDA, EBIT net income arriving to the free cash flow and which free cash flow, the levered or the unlevered, depending if you want to apply DCF or you want to apply IRR method. What is the enterprise value and the equity value? Which are the various financing options for me that they will affect the value and my returns? Is the IRR the driver for my decisions? Am I investing and I'm valuing an asset as a company or as a private equity fund? What are the main differences between corporate and investment valuation? If I'm a company buying another company or if I'm a fund that is buying a company? The corporate valuation basically is um, around IPOs, public listed companies and M&A. The investment valuation, we define it um, um, as growth capital, LBO, distress and infrastructure investments. And these are the areas that we will cover. Um, we are covering, we have added in our program a short session in venture capital and a session in real estate to have all the different um, asset classes. Is the investor a company again or a fund? Which are the main um, valuation methods to apply? The main valuation methods are COMPS, comparables, discounted cash flow and the IRR method. In the COMPS side, you need to be able to analyze public COMPS, transaction COMPS, um, the, the value of the company, the private COMPS and the company's performance. In the discounted cash flow side, you have WAC versus APV. There are a lot of cases that WAC is applying less. Constant capital structure WAC, does it apply to LBOs? APV is taking into consideration the changes in the debt in the capital structure. Then IRR method. The IRR method, if it's only equity, convertible bonds, minority positions, trying to acquire um, a high growth asset uh, with equity, venture capital and growth capital finance. Then you have debt and equity in LBO finance, but you have dividend lockup, no cash out. You have only cash in and out. Um, and then you have project and infrastructure finance that you have a dividend waterfall. That means uh, the IRR method um, is giving you different results because uh, you have to apply the dividend discount model. How can financing structures affect valuation? The capital structure is affecting valuation. Um, the type, the quantum, the tenor, the pricing, the structuring of the debt. Um, and in the debt side, you have the option to have loans or bonds. Senior, secured, um, um, a junior, mezzanine, pick loans. Or you can have bonds, um, senior or unsecured bonds or pick bonds. On the other side, when you invest your equity, you can structure it in a combination of equity and quasi-equity. That means you can have shareholder loans and convertible bonds with a fixed um, instrument, um, fixed interest rate instrument, or you can have preferred ordinary shares with a, a dividend coupon and then a, in a combination with ordinary shares. Where does it help to have quasi-equity and, and shareholder loans and convertible bonds or preferred ordinary shares in a combination with ordinary shares, how I structure it, how I model it, how does it affect my value, how does it affect my free cash flows. Now we will look at um, the different asset classes and the details that someone needs to know if he wants to be able to be an independent investor. Are you doing capital increase? Are you issuing new shares or you buy shares? That means shareholder liquidity. Um, how you define pre-money and post-money valuation and when you do an acquisition, are you doing it in pre or in post? What's the investment size um, and uh, which percentage you will acquire? Uh, is your investment applying to pre or to post-money valuation? Then how you structure the growth capital investment? Are you structuring ordinary sales? Are you structuring uh, with preferred ordinary sales with a dividend coupon and ordinary sales? Will you structure it um, with a circular loan with an interest rate and ordinary shares? Will you do it with a convertible bond and ordinary shares? The tax advantages on PNL and the stronger free cash flow. In a lot of jurisdictions, if you will invest with a convertible bond and with a circular loan, 
on the P&L you have a non-cash interest rate that's accumulated and sell an obligation. That means you can have the tax yield advantage that will reduce the taxes that you have to pay and will increase your free cash flow. Um, but uh, in the free cash flow you have only the cash interest to pay. This is giving you a, a, an advantage to use this cash to grow your company. How the structuring can affect the value? You can have liquidation preference rights, one times, two times. You can have a dilution. Will you have full versus weighted average ratchet? And then various structures around the financial and the legal, they can affect the value and you will need to model them. Will you have a preemption? Will you have tag and drag along rights? Will you have a first refusal? Will you have a negative control rights? And then you have to look your returns in the exit. And these returns, they will drive in the value that you're prepared to pay. Um, should I convert, if I will invest with a convertible, uh, into cash or into shares? And under which conditions I convert into shares? And under which conditions I convert into cash? Then the management structure and upside. Will you uh, provide a sweet equity to the management or you will give them an option plan? the value creation drivers in growth capital investments. Then we move to the LBOs. In the growth capital, most, the majority of the cases that are um, um, technology companies from the venture capital space or family businesses with high growth uh, and they don't want to give control and you try to invest usually in minority positions um, with convertible bonds or preferred ordinary shares or shareholder loans in combination with ordinary shares and you have to face all these challenges. Um, in the, and it's a pure equity investment. In the LBO side, uh, you invest uh, debt plus equity. That means the type, quantum pricing and structure of debt uh, and the size of debt versus equity is the first thing that you are looking before you will structure your value before you will value the asset because the more that you can take more, uh, the lower equity value in the entry that is boosting your returns. Who will pay the fees? Because the fees that will come on the top of the value and they can affect uh, um, the total sources of funds. You know, are the banks uh, putting the money for the fees? Um, uh, is it pro rata between debt and equity or is the equity that is uh, paying the fees that's affecting the equity value in the entry? What's the business growth, plan scenarios and sensitivities? Um, your free cash flows, how much you stress your free, free cash flows? So which fixed, uh, which cash cover you agree with the banks? Will you have any refinancing risk? And for how many years will be the refinancing risk? Uh, um, then negotiating the credit uh, analysis and the covenants with the banks uh, and then uh, in the future can you have a dividend recap after a few years your debt will be reduced. Uh, that means you can raise the same probably multiple of debt depending on the economic conditions and then probably you can take part of the cash out as a dividend uh, through a loan or preferably the banks they would prefer if they have a loan position to do it through high yield bonds. Um, then um, the set incentive plan, the MSIP uh, that you offer to the management or the sweet equity will affect uh, the value but at the same time the management will be interested to know the size of your shareholder loan and uh, the size of the interest rate on the shareholder loan because could affect in a downside scenario their returns. What's the exit route and what's the time of the exit? It will affect your returns. At the end, you will not see only the uh, IRR, you will see in the money multiple because IRR is um, depending uh, from uh, the period. Uh, that means if I will exit on year two or year five for the same equity value on the entry and in the exit, then I have um, you know, a different IRR, but the money multiple remains the same. I invested X, I take out uh, two X, uh, two times my money. And then we're discussing and then you have to figure out which are the value creation drivers, is the leverage, is the growth of the EBITDA, is the money multiple, is the equity structure, etc., etc. The next area is the distress. Distress, um, it's a little different. The, the, the main valuation methods they apply, but depending on the asset, um, um, th there are more things that you need to know if you try to 
to value a distress asset. Uh, and distress is a very interesting area, especially for the Europeans, that the whole market is moving towards to credit. Uh, and growth and LBOs, you see, they're more in, in uh, the US market. In the US market is everything, but um, uh, Europe looks um, um, that would be very interesting, the distress restructuring a credit area in the future. Um, what you need to know before you value an asset, uh, is it a cash flow problem or it's a balance it issue? Um, what does it mean loan to own um, and uh, what you're trying to do? Are you trying to enter um, and to acquire the asset taking control or not? Um, how you define value break where the valuation is breaking uh, in the senior level, in the mess level, in the equity level and who is losing his money and from which value I can start uh, that I can calculate my recovery value. Which valuation methods they will apply in these cases? Will they apply the usual valuation methods like COMS, discounted cash flow, LBO, IRR method? Or uh, we have other methods like the liquidation analysis. How the restructuring can affect my value? If I will do a covenants reset, if I will do a debt buyback and in which price, if I will um, have debt to equity swap, if I will put new capital financing, uh, and the last asset class that we will see, uh, we don't cover today real estate and venture capital, um, is about infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure investment is a very interesting asset class and uh, um, can become very technical. Um, you look at um, greenfield projects that they have a construction period uh, that you need to calculate the VAT loans and all that. Um, you need to find how the free cash flows, how you will pay the debt the first two, three, four, five years, taking the risk to do the construction, or it's an infrastructure operating asset. Are you building an airport or you're buying an airport? Do you raise project or you raise infrastructure finance? And what's the capital structure? Because in project or infrastructure finance could be different and different from leverage finance that you use for the LBOs. And all this, the financing is affecting the value at the end. Now, how much debt you can raise, what type of debt. Um, can you raise mezzanine um, in infrastructure finance uh, that has probably returns that can go to high teens when uh, um, you know the returns, the equity returns in infrastructure they are lower, lower. Probably you, you raise bonds or uh, um, uh, loans that they are more in the senior and the sub side. Then the quasi equity. Are you raising, are you investing with ordinary shares or you use a shareholder loan uh, interest and uh, um, um, shareholder loans uh, with a high interest coupon that uh, a lot of times in infrastructure, especially in alternative energy, you don't have um, uh, profits. That means if you don't have profits, then um, uh, you need, it's, a, it's a very nice way to take cash out of the company with a shareholder loan than to expect uh, the dividends. Um, then. Uh, how you size um, and how you arrive to the value in an infrastructure asset. The debt service coverage ratio uh, and the covenant structure will be important uh, step um, calculating your value and how much financing the banks they can give you. Because you maximize your debt and then you add your equity to arrive to the final price. Um, then uh, the advantage that you have in infrastructure is that um, the shareholder loan interest, the principal, and if you have dividends, there is a waterfall. That means there is cash out every year. In the LBOs, you have a dividend lockup. The shareholder loan is non-cash, and you have a dividend lockup. That means uh, the model, the value, the financing is different. Uh, the other thing, in the infrastructure, you have every few years a refinancing, okay, uh, with lower cost debt, and you can take even dividends out that you don't do usually in LBOs that you lock the cash. Um, the last thing is uh, sometimes you sell the asset in infrastructure, sometimes you keep the asset uh, for all your life um, looking for a cash yield like the pension funds are doing. Um, and then uh, when you sell an asset, if you repower an alternative energy or you extend the concession of the airport, then you have to factor it up in evaluation, trying to sell the future free cash flows, finding the net NPV in the year of the exit. In the infrastructure, you're looking not only the IRR, but you're looking the cash yield per year. 
and then uh, the value will be affected from your exit. Is the buyer a pension fund or a P fund or a corporate? Because um, the discount rate of the buyer could be different. Uh, the expected IRR of the buyer could be different. Uh, that means um, if the expected IRR is different, your NPV will be higher or lower. And then we're discussing the value creation drivers that can be uh, leverage, they can be growth, they can be um, the, the equity structure, um, they can be uh, the um, exit options that you have and where you can sell um, the asset. Um, and my background very quickly, as I said, I'm running um, the Private Equity Institute and I'm running the Oxford Chicago Discuss Valuation Program in the Finance Lab. Before I worked in private equity, in leverage finance, venture capital and growth capital, I trained as an engineer and I studied at um, University of Chicago. You can visit our website, you can see the videos, um, you can see all the information that we have in the Oxford site or in the Chicago site. Um, you can contact Steve Brewster, uh, steve.brewster at sbs.ox.ac.uk to give you any information, to show you the materials that we're um, uh, preparing uh, and you can apply to the Oxford Chicago Valuation Program between 22nd and 26th of May. It's one block week. Uh, we will present the program now. We are offering two packs um, that uh, if you register quickly we can uh, provide these two packs. 700 pages theory, 700 pages cases. Uh, that there are more investment banking pitches uh, style um, than Harvard Business School style uh, with text. Uh, and uh, we provide a USB with all the professional models for all the asset classes that um, uh, our, our fellows they have prepared together with us. That means we will show you now the, um, the uh, outline of the program, then we will show you some slides uh, uh, to take a flavor about um, the materials, uh, and then we will be happy to answer any questions. If you will send any questions, we would appreciate. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so we had a question, would we uh, be able to uh, circulate the details at the end? So yes we will, in fact we will have a recording of this webinar which will be uh, available afterwards, which uh, will be, be circulated afterwards so people, so people can see that. Okay, the program, um, um, uh, the program is divided in two areas, you will see the white area and the blue area. In the white area is the theory and some modeling workshops that, uh, that will be offered by the Deputy Dean of Chicago, an expert in valuation, Mark Zinevsky, from um, um, the Head of Finance Faculty and Academic Director of Private Equity Institute, Tim Jenkinson, and uh, from myself. Um, and um, the program uh, will have the first day we cover um, valuation, uh, COMS, DCF, and uh, IRR to refresh the basic concepts. Um, in the second day, uh, we are discussing corporate M&A, and, um, and uh, uh, the third day, we continue with capital structure and LBOs. The fourth day, we discuss growth capital valuation and minority positions. Uh, in the afternoon, distress and restructuring. And uh, the last day, we discuss in the morning real estate, in the afternoon infrastructure. The first day, we have a case um, with Rothschild, uh, in the area of healthcare about cross-border um, corporate M&A. We touch the issues of R&D, working capital, capex, how they affect valuation, how you can value an asset uh, in emerging markets, uh, and uh, if the asset has its sales in Western Europe, um, how you can value the asset based on its sales in Western Europe, based on the risk of the country. Then we continue the second day with a uh, center view. Uh, James Hartop, that we will discuss the theory and we will do uh, three cases together in the mergers, mergers and corporate acquisition, corporate capital raising. And then we will continue with uh, Dan Oaks from uh, Commerzbank that we will do um, a very interesting case in Germany, Brentac, that is a chemical company and uh, Bain is acquiring, is selling to BC partners, they go for an IPO and they have different sales, um, different sale periods after the IPO a fantastic um, a case that shows one private equity, equity fund valuing the asset, another private equity fund buying and valuing the asset, pre-IPO valuation, post-IPO valuation. Then Wednesday, 
uh, we will have uh, modeling workshops, we will have uh, an ex-director of Bridgepoint um, uh, that's in the M&A site now um, uh, discussing um, an LBO case, um, how you acquire a retail company, how you build the vintages, how you build the models, how you structure a private equity investment. Uh, then um, Tuesday we will do a modeling workshop in uh, uh, convertible bonds. You don't need to model yourselves. The modeling workshops, you are divided in groups, you have the models and we discuss the concepts in Excel. And there will be basically two modeling workshops, one in LBOs, one in growth capital. There will be the theory and there will be the cases. And we will give you a full range of uh, models. Then in the afternoon we have the global head of restructuring distress of Goldman, Rube Sach, to talk about the concepts and then doing um, a case. And then we will have Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking to do an infrastructure case and we will have patron to do real estate cases on Friday. To show you very quickly now before we will go to the questions uh, some sample of materials that you will understand the type of the uh, materials that we offer on the top of the 12 models. There are 1,400 pages in a banking format uh, um, that um, with Luis Duarte, that he was with Bridgepoint, we will cover, okay, which are the value drivers for P returns, um, how we calculate our returns, uh, EBDA growth, the leveraging multiple arbitrage. Then with um, uh, Dimitri Siroides of Rothschild, we will look at the purpose of an operating model, the key aspects, uh, okay, um, how R&D is affecting my valuation, uh, do I look um, do I capitalize? Do I expense R&D when I'm looking at the comps? Do I have the comps in the same way, post or pre-R&D? How the networking capital is affecting my valuation? What is a lockbox? What is closing of the accounts when I acquire a company? How CapEx maintenance development CapEx can affect my value? How the valuation methods they can apply in a corporate M&A, discounted cash flow, comps and LBOs. What are the different steps? What are the different steps in the LBOs? What are the different steps in the DCF? Um, and then if you acquire a, an American company, acquiring a company in uh, Greece, uh, which WAC you will use? You will use the Greek WAC or the international WAC. What's the, debt or the cost of debt of Greece? Uh, if the company is selling its products in Western Europe, okay, it's my risk-free rate in Germany that's selling the products or in Greece. Uh, we go in a lot of technicalities and then we are looking then the company with the DCF as a whole or we do the parts and then we arrive on the football field explaining the case. Then we continue with the growth capital investments, analyzing the asset, um, looking at the competitors and the benchmarking, um, the three-dimensional way, the growth with the EBITDA and the value of the company looking at the operating model assumptions, if we are investing with a convertible bond, how it will work, the comps of the company, the risk analysis and the sensitivities. Then we continue with um, a distress asset, um, a company in Czech Republic and the steel, what are the signs of financial distress, which are the valuation considerations, what's the market value, where the value is breaking, how I do my DCF or my liquidation or other analysis, how I arrive in different valuation ranges, okay, uh, what are the potential paths to restore capital structure and how this would affect my valuation. And then in the infrastructure side, you know, we have Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking to come to discuss about what's the difference between LBOs and infrastructure concepts, uh, what are the key considerations structuring this type of events, investments, uh, what's the type of financing, uh, okay, and they discuss a case, Elenia, that Elenia is a company in uh, Finland uh, and how they finance this company uh, doing the infrastructure investments, the returns, etc., uh, um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, now, after this, uh, I can say, high-speed uh, um, description about the questions that, uh, <coughs> the concepts that you need to know, valuing um, corporate M&A and private equity investments, uh, um, the answer that we're giving with our program, um, and um, some sample uh, slides uh, from our um, uh, cases and a theory that um, there are two packs of 1,400 pages plus 12 professional models, plus 15 people that they participate and they present for you in this program, and uh, 45 participants uh, from all around the world. I will be more than happy, uh, me and Steve, to take any questions. <coughs> yes, we spoke Yeah, thank you.
thinking. So we have a couple of uh, questions which we're just uh, reading through. So thank you for sending those through. And if other people have more questions, then please feel free to enter those into the question panel, which is in front of you, uh, which is probably the, the quickest way to do that. So to start off with, we do have uh, a question from uh, Miguel. So Miguel, thank you for your question. Good to hear from you. Uh, Miguel Fitzgerald, yeah. So uh, thank you for coming along on our real estate program last year. Yes, there is a discount for people who have done our other programs, uh, like the real estate program <coughs> or the private equity program or some of our other uh, programs, and that's 15%, 1-5% worth about a thousand pounds in this case. Uh, there's a question um, uh, about LBOs. Yes, LBOs, we mean leverage buyouts, okay? And so when you acquire companies, a private equity fund with that and equity, you need to apply the LBO uh, valuation method. And if you are doing acquisitions, you need to apply um, um, a different the valuation methods in a different uh, way. That means there is a difference between LBOs leverage buyouts, buying companies, and um, infrastructure, buying infrastructure assets. Um, um, what support is available to graduates uh, to be hands-on after the program? Um, um, we are running uh, the program and I think we provide such a depth of materials and models, such a great experience that, um, um, uh, that I think you <laughs> The beauty of this program is you don't understand the concept, then you can go and then you are alone. The beauty of this program is you have such a detailed manual and models that you can become an independent executor. That means you can become an independent analyst depending how much time you want to put. We are discussing at the moment to develop um, a weekend uh, follow-up uh, um, after uh, for the people that they did the program that um, uh, we can uh, um, 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 have uh, like a weekend every two years that uh, all the students they will come together and uh, we will have some simulations and cases going in more depth. But at the moment we believe with the materials that we have in the models and attending our session you will be an independent executor later. Um, you don't need any support. What is mezzanine debt? Uh, <laughs> there is a gentleman that's asking uh, um, we will cover this uh, um, um, in our um, um, uh, program. It's a type of data that uh, is very popular in US and in Europe and is uh, sitting between senior debt and equity. And is not applying um, um, to uh, uh, venture capital transactions that another gentleman is asking. Uh, I have the impression that the valuation is based on forecasts. Uh, um, if the valuation will cover the valuation of a startup, um, I think it's very simple. You don't need to do a program if you want to value a startup because it's not about financing, modeling, and all that. It's about the idea. But if you want to look tech companies and uh, how you value companies that they will have revenues and uh, profits, then the growth capital, we will cover venture capital uh, from a growth capital perspective. And when you will know the valuation methods, the IRR method and the comps, then you can easily do uh, the startup uh, uh, valuation after. Who should do the valuation, the acquirer or the seller? Uh, I think it will be smart to do the two sides. Uh, um, the valuation uh, and uh, they should know the two sides. You, you want to know in which price you sell and you want to know which price you buy, no? Um, uh, the pre-course materials, um, uh, some light from Abbas. Um, um, basically we will give you a lot of pre-readings, we will have an online session, we can provide you the packs earlier, the models, everything. Uh, um, and um, um, we are doing the first day uh, like um, 
to refresh your knowledge around evaluation methods, COMPS, DCF, and IRR. That means uh, um, if if you have done um, if you have worked in business, if you have done a finance degree, if you have done an MBA, if you know the basics of the evaluation methods, you don't need any. Um, um, there are not any uh, pre-required um, knowledge to, to to have, but the course can become very technical. That means we highly recommend to apply early, um, at, to be admitted early, and to start to do some uh, pre-reading. Uh, um, I think uh, if you know the three valuation methods and if you will refresh mm -hmm. yourself the three valuation methods the first day, you're fine. Um, so most people who come on the program will have studied finance previously, either with an MBA or they might have an accounting background or something like this. Uh, so they are f uh, familiar with the basic theories, but they also know that the theories can only take you so far. So we have the question, who should do the valuation, the buyer or the seller? Well, both sides should, and both sides will use their own uh, models and rates and assumptions to give uh, uh, a different uh, value. So at the end of that, uh, the, the program will help you to uh, to understand what uh, assumptions both sides will use and how to get to the final transaction deal. Okay, and uh, do you deal with early stage investment valuations for VC, uh, Mark? As I mentioned, if you want to do uh, I said financing or startup, uh, I think the valuation is very straightforward. From the first day with IRR method and comps, you are there. But we are doing uh, more sophisticated in the growth capital. That means we are talking about minority positions in high growth companies, venture or non-venture, um, with convertible bonds or with preferred ordinary shares, with liquidation preference, with undilution, drag along, tag along rights, and all these structures, sophisticated structures, that probably not in the first round, but later in VC, that will be very helpful. And we provide the models. Um, and then, um, if we provide a certificate, yes, Oxford and Chicago, they provide uh, you know, a, a certificate that's confirming that you um, attended this um, uh, a, a program. And um, Yes, so at the completion of the program, you will get a certificate to show that, which is uh, signed and issued by both uh, Chicago Booth and Oxford Said Business Schools. Uh, if you are a member of the CFA, for, for example, or uh, an accountant and you need to, to show some uh, CPD, then you can use this for that. Uh, I think that the, the number of hours of CPD PD the you can get for the for the valuation program is 32, which is the, the maximum that the CFA allows for any uh, for any one activity. And um, um, uh, and uh, answering to the question that um, um, Mark just asked about if we're uh, if we're covering the strategic side, of course, you know, um, uh, the global head of Rothschild in Pharma is coming, the head of Center View in Europe, the head of, um, of Goldman from New York. Um, guys from Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking and all that, Bridgepoint, it, it's, it, the case is that a blend of strategy and uh, way of thinking is not only valuation methods, we have covered them from a technical perspective, the theory, in the workshops, then the question is how do they apply in the reality and how strategically you are thinking in a blend with the technical skills. And um, if we are looking at um, uh, public listed companies, yes, uh, we will look at uh, um, uh, the case uh, of uh, Brenta, as I discussed, uh, that was a company, uh, P-backed, uh, that was listed, and then when it was listed, uh, there were the different exit scenarios. But of course, we will touch, uh, and if you want to do public to private, uh, okay, uh, under which circumstances and under which cases, a private equity fund will do it. You know, and they're limited of the information. You cannot do the due diligence. We have only the public information. What percentage you need to do the public to private? If it's hyperinflated, the price can uh, probably have the returns that you want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We will cover all these things uh, um, um, in, in our uh, uh, program. Um, if I can, if I can co <laughs> compare the program to the Wall Street Prep tutorials. Uh, covering valuation methodologies. Wall Street Prep, because I'm running the Oxford Said Finance Lab, that's probably an advanced version of Wall Street Prep. Wall Street Prep is more about Excel. And um, here, as Mark asked before, is about uh, how to know the valuation methods, to know Excel, 
um, to know, um, to have done some practice in the workshops, so it's more about the concepts, how they apply. That means they're like simulations, like real transactions, how you will think um, about this. The Wall Street prep first is online. That means when it's online, you, you know, you don't have this interaction. The second thing is um, our class is more advanced and is blending concepts, senior speakers, faculty, small part, Excel, okay, and um, uh, cases. But we do give people a range of uh, Excel models to take away as well. So for each of the cases which, which we have, uh, you will take away a USB uh, stick with uh, a range of Excel uh, templates at the, at the end so you can adapt those to your own uh, investments and transactions which you're looking at. Before you will start the program, um, we can provide you a book um, uh, to read uh, or some materials to read, uh, to refresh. Uh, you should not feel um, we can prepare you before with a book um, and with some pre-reading materials. Basically, you need to have to know IRR, discounted cash flow and uh, comps method, the basics, and we can help you on this uh, if some students uh, or participants they require. There are coming 50 people from all around the world. Uh, um, 50 people from all around the world uh, um, and uh, from these 50 people that are coming from around the world uh, you have people from pension funds, from corporate M&A, CFOs, uh, you know, advisors uh, um, and uh, basically uh, a big part is coming from US and UK, you have Middle East and Africa and a smaller part from Asia. Uh, we will have uh, other um, a last question, um, the last uh, one, two questions, so, uh, if there are any other questions, and uh, we will close the session, but Steve will be available to answer um, any questions that he will mail you, and we're looking forward to see you March 14 in um, uh, London, or uh, to see you um, uh, on May in Oxford, uh, uh, one week, uh, um, 50 hours, 50 to 60 hours um, uh, lecturing, uh, um, uh, three um, leading uh, faculty members, uh, um, seven um, um, uh, senior members from London, from Rothschild, Centerview, Bridgepoint, Goldman Sachs, Commerce Bank, uh, Patron, and Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking, uh, um, and uh, networking with our alumni. Uh, at the end, uh, you become alumnus um, um, in Oxford and UK can participate and you can have uh, a corporate trade in the future programs uh, uh, as a member of University of Oxford Alumni Network. Um, I will pass you now to Steve. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot him an email. Thank you very much, Andreas. Thank you. So just to recap then, the uh, next Oxford Chicago Evaluation Program is up in May. We will go up to uh, a maximum of 50 people in that group. We are halfway there stood at the moment, which is where we would expect to be. So if you are interested in, uh, in coming, then we recommend that you uh, register uh, now or give us your, your indication now uh, so that we can get your place confirmed and also uh, send you the, uh, the pre-reading uh, in good time for, for, for for you to go through. As Andreas mentioned, for those people in London, we will be holding a, uh, a discussion panel on private equity and co-investments on the, the 14th of March at the Chicago Booth Campus in the city. Uh, we'll send some more details on that and hope to, to, to see you there. We will also circulate uh, this uh, recording of this webinar so you can uh, recap on that, but if you do have any questions about the, the content of that or about the program itself and how to register, then my details are on the screen and will also be on the email. Please do get in contact with me. With me. I'd be very happy to, to help you and to have you along for the program in May. So thank you again to Andreas. Thank you for your time, uh, everybody out there in joining us uh, today for the last hour or so and I hope you have a good evening. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Thank you.